This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 3, Section 1, Scientific Measurement. First, the vocabulary. Again, repeat after me. If you're home, say them out loud. If you're in class, maybe whisper um, or at least repeat in your head. All right, here we go. Absolute zero. Accepted value. Accuracy. Calorie. Celsius scale. Conversion factor. Density. Dimensional analysis. Energy. Error. Experimental value. Gram. International system of units. Joule. Kelvin scale. Kilogram. Liter. Measurement. Meter. Percent error. Precision. Scientific notation, significant figures, temperature, and weight. So just like we did in chapter one, you're going to watch the rest of this video, write down the notes, and then you're going to define those terms by either looking through the chapter, that's what I strongly suggest you do, uh, or you can look in the glossary on page R, which means reference 118, that's in the back of the book. Um, and of course, why you ask, because of the uh, vocabulary quiz, just like the first one, it will be matching in the same order, and I'm going to be using the definitions more like the ones uh, that you'll see throughout the chapter. So section one is on measurements and their uncertainty. In this section, your objective is going to be converting measurements to scientific notation, something you did in your uh, summer packet. So I'm going to go through it kind of quickly, uh, but I still, still need to know and understand and how to do it. Uh, and to distinguish between accuracy, precision, and the error of measurements. On January 4th, 2004, the Mars Exploration Rover Spirit landed on Mars, equipped with five scientific instruments and a rock abrasion tool, shown at left. Spirit was sent to examine the Martian surface around, I have no idea how you say that, but that's a certain crater, a wide basin that may have once held a lake. Each day of its mission, Spirit recorded measurements for analysis. This data helped scientists learn about the geology and climate on Mars. All measurements have some uncertainty. In chemistry laboratory, you must strive for accuracy and precision in your measurements. So we're gonna talk about those things in this section. So how do measurements relate to science? So again, you wanna pause, you wanna write down the blanks, uh, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So a measurement we want to remember is a quantity, that's the actual value or the number, and a unit. And I've mentioned this multiple times. Science is really based on measurements, right? Math is numbers alone, two plus two. But in science, two doesn't really mean anything to scientists. You have to say two centimeters plus two centimeters to give you the four centimeters at the end. And I want to remind you that the unit always, always, always will come after the number. And you'll see later when we deal with percent error, even though I'm asking for percent error and you're using the formula, your answer needs to be a value number and the unit of percent because the number doesn't do any good. And the unit before the number doesn't make any sense either. So it's always a number, then unit. So in scientific notation, again, read as you write. I'm going to go through this rather quickly because you've already seen this on your summer assignment packet. So we want to remember that that number has to be between 1 and 10. In other words, the number can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So here are some examples of what that, that number is. So why do we do this? Because expressing very large numbers like stars in the galaxy would be a pain in the butt to be writing all of these numbers down. So to make it in scientific notation and have that exponent just makes life a little bit easier for scientists to deal with really, really large numbers or really, really small numbers. So this is pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to do some examples, uh, so I'm not going to go in great detail. Again, you probably learned this uh, in your math classes as well as the summer packet. So example one, if we look at this number, first question, where is the decimal? Right there at the end, even though it's not shown, it's understood to be at the end. 
So where do we move it to, uh, where do we move that decimal in order to get this number two scientific notation between the three and the five? So our number is going to be 3.5 times 10 to some exponent. So how many times do we move it from where it is to where it needs to go? One, two, three, four times. Okay, so then the next question is, is this number a big or small number? It is a big number, so our exponent is going to be positive or negative. It's going to be positive. So now we can add that exponent of times 10 to the positive fourth power. Hopefully that makes sense, but this is, a, again, a good review on how to go from a, uh, a normal number or a long-form number to scientific notation. Example two, now the decimal's over here, so that's easy to see because it's, it's shown. Um, where do we move it to in order to get to scientific notation? Again, between the four and the two, right? We need a number between one and 10. Um, so it's going to be 4.2 times 10 to some exponent. Again, how many times are we moving the decimal? We're moving it one, two, three times. So now is that number three exponent, uh, I'm sorry, is the original number big or small? In this case, it's a small number. So is that three exponent going to be a positive number or a negative number? In this case, it's negative. So it's going to be 4.2 times 10 to the negative third power. So let's go the other way now. Is the exponent positive or negative? It is positive this time. So the original number that it came from must have been a big number, right? If this is a positive exponent, that means the original number was big. So are we moving that decimal to the left or to the right? Hopefully you said right. And how many times? Five. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, there's nothing here, right? Those loop de loops don't have anything there. So we're going to replace them with zeros, right? And in this case, three zeros we're going to add because those three loops don't have anything. So adding those three zeros, and this is going to equal 694,000. So one more time, is the exponent positive or negative? Hopefully you clearly can see it's negative. Was the original big or small then? The original number must have been small. So we're moving the decimal place to the left or to the right. Hopefully you said left. How many times? Well, if it's negative two, we're moving it twice to the left. So boom, boom. Do we have to add any zeros? Absolutely one of them because one of the loop-de-loops -loops don't have anything. And again, I want to remind you, I'd like to put a 0 0.015 just so you're uh, making sure that people are aware where that decimal place is. So if I grade something and I see a big space between two zeros, whether I can see the decimal or not, I'm going to kind of assume it's there. Okay, so there are some practice problems. So if you need to, you can rewind and go through those four example problems or um, pause, do all of these, make sure that you can uh, get them done, and then the next slide is your answers. So hopefully those make sense. Now, the only thing I can tell you is that I left a space here and here just to uh, make it a little bit easier to read how many zeros there are. So you don't have to leave those spaces. You know, like here, when you have a large number, you can use commas to kind of separate the zeros. Uh, but here, when you just have decimals, I just use the space to like kind of separate uh, like three zeros at a time or something like that. So again, you don't need the spaces there. They're just there. So it's easier for you to be able to count how many zeros there should be. So at this point, if you got these all right, woohoo! If you didn't get these right or you're not understanding what you're doing wrong, please see me in class, especially when we're going over the bookwork. There's also online practice. Uh, you can go right to my website or you can pause and kind of copy that down. It's kind of weird. Um, but on that website that I have of mine uh, is also this link and you can also practice more online. So now let's talk about these errors. And we talked a little bit about errors when we're doing lab. That's when we're going to talk about them the most. Um, there's human error, there's equipment error, and there's calculations errors. And those are kinds of things that I came up with. But when we do lab, we're going to come up with very specific um, uh, errors in our lab, that specific lab or experiment that we're doing. So then what's the difference between accuracy and precision?
Well, accuracy is getting to the actual, the, the true value, the value that's been, you know, in the chemistry books or the value that's been written down, and that's the true value. Where precision is just, can that measurement be reproduced? Can we take that measurement and have the same results over and over again? So here's a little bit of visual. So why don't we go through it first, and then you're going to pause it. You can draw the targets then in your notes, and then make a, 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 do the corresponding um, uh, labels of them. So if we look at the three target areas, your main focus is to get the targets right in the middle. Okay, so that would be accurate. Okay, so what's going on here? So for A, is it pure, poor accuracy, good precision, good accuracy, good precision, or poor accuracy, poor precision? So if you pause, just kind of come up with something in your head first, and then we'll go over the answers. So hopefully this makes sense. So A is very, very good accuracy because they're hitting the target, but it's also good precision because all three of them are hitting the target. B, on the other hand, is is poor accuracy because none of them are hitting the target, but they're very precise because all those measurements, all of those darts are hitting the same area. And then of course C, that's not accurate nor precise, okay, because they're all over the place. So those are the kinds of values or those are the kinds of results that you can get in lab. So pause, make sure you're drawing some kind of target and then labeling, labeling each one accordingly. So does anybody play golf? Well, three players take their turn. So are these guys accurate? Inconceivable! Are these guys precise? Yes! Because they're hitting the same area, but not the area that you really want it to. How about these guys? Accurate? Yes! And precise? Yes! Okay, so these ladies are accurate because they're hitting the same spot and they're precise because, again, they're hitting the same spot. So accurate because they're hitting the, the spot that they want and precise because they're hitting the same spot. All right, again. Aha. Inconceivable. All right. So none of the, right, not accurate, not precise. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Accurate? Yes. Precise? Have we learned our lesson now? We can't say, because again, remember, precision is about the, the, the measurement being in the same area over and over and over and over again, okay? So you can be accurate with one, but you can't be precise with one. So we want to remember that accuracy can be true of even one individual measurement, but precision has to be on several measurements. So let's again do some practice problems. Pause. These are your values. Can you come up with the answers for one, two, three, four? Hopefully that makes sense. And again, if it doesn't, you need to call me over or talk to one of your um, uh, fellow classmates in class. So percent error then tells us how close your measurement is to that actual value. So this is our formula, okay? A stands for answer, and again, there's that percent that I was talking about. And this is the absolute value symbols because again, percent can only be in the positive sense. So in the calculator, okay, in the calculator, you're going to do your subtraction, then equals, divide, then equals, multiply, then equals, okay? So somehow in your notes, write it in that way that you understand uh, the actual mathematics of it. So here's an example problem, okay? So you're going to pause, you're going to read. Now let's look here, let's do some calculations. So first of all, we're going to take our big number minus our little number on top no matter what. I know there's the absolute value signs, but I always say take the big minus small, always, always, always. On the bottom, however, we always want the actual number. You wanna remember that you're dividing by the true or the actual number. So in our calculators, we're gonna subtract equals, you're gonna divide equals, and then you're going to multiply by that 100 equals. So again, make sure that you pause and you can do that mathematics in your calculator correctly. So we want to remember big minus small on top to get a positive and divide by the actual. So again, pause, do these practice problems, and then click through to get the answers.
Hopefully those make sense. And again, if not, you're going to ask for my help. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, real quiz. Hopefully you got that answer. And we will see you in class.